All right, so one more example here of finding a, a new series expansion based on a known series expansion. So here we're going to find a Maclaurin series for cosine squared x by using the expansion uh, for cosine x, which is uh, the series from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x raised to the 2n over 2n factorial. And the way that we're going to do this is um, we're actually just going to also use a trig identity. So recall that cosine squared x, that's going to be 1 half 1 plus cosine of 2x. So the first thing I'm going to do is find a series expansion for cosine of 2x. So cosine of 2x, well this is where we'll use our known series expansion. We've got the series from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, Instead of just x inside the parentheses, you know, instead if it was cosine x, we have x to the 2n. Well, now we've got cosine of 2x, so we'll have, well, 2x raised to the 2n power, all over 2n factorial. And again, I think I'm going to simplify this just a little bit. So let's see, this is uh, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. We could write this as 2 raised to the uh, 2n, but I'm going to write that as 2 squared raised to the n. So again, there, there's our 2 to the 2n. And then we have x raised to the 2n over 2n factorial. So that's the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. Well, 2 squared is just 4. So we have 4 to the n times x to the 2n all over 2n factorial. All right, so when we fill in our identity, again, we've got, so cosine squared x, it says that's 1 half 1 plus cosine of 2x. Well, we've now got our series expansion for um, cosine of 2x here. We said that that's simply going to be the series from n equals 0 to infinity. We've got negative 1 to the n times 4 to the n times x to the 2n power, all over 2n factorial. So let's see here. Um, I guess a couple different things. Um, I'm going to expand out a couple terms here just to see what happens. So we would have 1 half, 1 plus. If we expand out our series, notice if we plug in n equals 0. If we plug in n equals 0, we'll get negative 1 to the 0, which is 1. We'll get 4 to the 0, which is 1 x to the 0, which is 1, 0 factorial. It looks like we'll get a positive 1. And then when we plug in our minus, we would have a minus. Let's see. So if we plug in n equals 1, we'll have a negative. We would have 4 times x to the second over 2 factorial. And then we can plug in one more term. Why not? Um, plus, so if we plug in, there's n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2. We would have a positive. We would have 4 squared. We would have x to the fourth power if we plug in n equals 2. And then we would have 4 factorial. And then it would just keep going. So again, I'm just expanding out the series is all I'm doing. Just to see if there's kind of any way to sort of condense it and uh, rewrite it here a little bit better. So I think we could, uh, you know, notice we could pull the, uh, we've got 1 plus 1. We could make that into a 2. So let's see, is this going to help much at all? Um, we could have 2, and then I'm going to leave the rest of the series alone. So there we have 2 plus, and then negative 4x squared over 2 factorial, plus 4 squared, x to the 4th over 4 factorial, etc. All right, so let's see here. Um, I should have one more set of parentheses. There we go, and... Let's put this in brackets even, make it look a little better. All right, so uh, if we distribute the 1 half, we would have, well, 1 plus 1 half. And now I'm going to rewrite this in, in series notation. I don't see a good, clean way to condense things. So in this case, though, notice we've already left off the n equals 0 term. We've already pulled that out. So now we should start this at n equals 1 to infinity. We'll have negative 1 to the n, 4 to the n, x to the 2n, over 2n factorial. 
Well, <clears throat> let's see. So we've got one. We can always distribute the one half inside. So n equals one to infinity. Let's see. We would have one half times negative one to the n. I'm going to actually rewrite my uh, my four. I'm going to rewrite that as two squared. So we've got two to the two n times x to the two n all over two n factorial. And all I'm going to do at this case is just uh, combine some like bases. So we've got uh, our positive 1 here. Let's see, plus the series from n equals 1 to infinity. It looks like we would have negative 1 to the n. We could subtract exponents. So we'd have 2 to the 2n over 2 to the first. Well, we would have 2 to the 2n minus 1 when we subtract our exponents. And then x to the 2n all over 2n factorial. But I guess we could actually, well, we have to be careful. I was going to say we could start this at n equals 0 and then incorporate the 1 back into it. But if we plug in n equals 0, we're going to have a 2 to the negative first, so we won't get the correct first term. So I would say um, I would just leave it like this. Um, I would say our series expansion is 1 plus n equals 1 to infinity negative 1 to the n, 2 to the 2n minus 1, x to the 2n, all over 2n factorial. So sometimes it does happen that you have series expansions where you may have a term or two that doesn't get incorporated into the summation, and that's fine. Um, you know, this I don't really see a good way to put the 1, you know, by changing the index, for example. So again, that can happen, no problems there. So I think I would just leave this alone and say, well, you know, again, this is now our series expansion for our original function, which was cosine squared x.